Hey everybody, this is Dave Turner, Rockstar, and this is the High Probability Watch List for the week of September 28th. It is the last week of September. We start off, uh, we start off October on Thursday, so it makes Wednesday the last day of the month. And, um, you know, that sometimes leads to uh, some market shenanigans. We talk about uh, portfolio, portfolio rebalancing, you know, some kind of window dressing. There's terms out there you hear for end of the month. We'll see. Uh, how that plays out, but there's even more scientific things that are playing out here, which I like to uh, to point out. As this week was a great week to show you patterns in the market, we identified multiple wedge patterns um, on our intraday charts. A, a beautiful wedge pattern here on our um, on our cash chart. A, be- a perfect example of a measured move, and I actually did a lot of videos on this this week, so I'll add those to the blog post this morning uh, today. Uh, for this evening along with the watch list. Now the first part of this of course will be the market radar. The second p- part will be members only. Uh, we have some great setups going into next week and it's very important that we keep that uh, uh, in our community. There is some really, really nice setups. So let's just take a look at the S&P. You know, we talked about today losing, it, l- it lost uh, some ground at you the know, end of the day. Take a look at this. Uh, right around 1.30 we kind of started getting a little weak and then we rolled over a little after 2 o'clock. And we, we did shoot down pretty well. I mean, we dropped uh, a good 20 points, 30 points, it looks like. 30 points we dropped. That's significant. Uh, there was definitely some weakness in the market. Now, again, I don't know if it was uh, some announcements with Boehner uh, earlier today. Um, there's a government shunt, shutdown that's lingering over the markets. All these things could come uh, to a head in, in the next couple of weeks. And, we, you know, we've we've seen this before in the market when the market is threatened with a government shutdown. It could get a little, uh, could get a little cranky. But uh, again, we want to take a look at more of why things. Uh, what can we predict on the market? What do we see? And uh, you can see a lot of lines here, a lot of volume profile lines, a lot of pivot areas. But I want to fill in the other part, the parts here. And I didn't pay attention too much to today's market. I was busy uh, doing the research and doing some other parts, fixing up other parts of the site. But as you can see, we opened up around 9.30. We chopped around most of the day until about, you know, like I said, around 2 o'clock. We rolled over and we saw that selling. So, But until then, you can actually see what what this all meant. I mean, uh, like I said, we've been seeing a lot of great patterns today, a lot of great patterns. And there's one thing that stands out, uh, you know, we talk about our time frames and how important a certain time frame is. Now, here's your daily chart. Yesterday... Uh, we had that breakdown. We had that tag of that lower trend line. This is an exact one, two, three pattern. There's a pivot up there. There's a pivot here. There's a pivot down here. We touched it to the basically to the penny, and we bounced off aggressively. And we got some good follow through. And we pulled back and we closed on the lows. I mean, it was a very, very choppy uh, two day session. I mean, we pushed higher and then dropped out lower. Uh, the fact is, we gets us closer to oversold on the uh, sixty. The six. I mean, the daily. The daily has not turned back up yet, but we're getting very close to being oversold. Uh, the one thing that just jumps out at you is we knew that we were going to get this rally. You never know anything positive, uh, you know, for sure. But I was predicting a rally yesterday going into today based off that 60-minute time frame. And yesterday's market radar, you know, we look for a follow-through day. And this was the uh, that measured move. Here was your rising uh, wedge pattern that was represented on the daily. And then that breakdown. And when we broke down, we actually... You know, we tend to form other patterns, and you can see a beautiful X marks the spot with the 60s. So this was our rally started right here. X marks the spot with a 60 rotation. Look at how perfect the rotation was, especially when the market has uh, some weight on top of it. Then you're looking for a faster rotation back down. When it's embedded to the downside, a typical weakness, extended moves. If it's embedded to the upside, then it's extended moves to the upside. In this case, when you have that downward moving, uh, uh, you know, that trend here and that flat line of the, the 60, that first rotation usually is a great opportunity just to see it r- rotate back down. And that's exactly what happened. We just rotated back up, time ran out, and we started pushing back down. We talk about the 60. Here it was. 60 here, boom. 60 here, boom. 60 here, sideways b- breakdown. It's a matter of time before that 60 cl- uh, cl- kind of clicks in and then, uh, you know, you see that momentum here shift with it and start to pull back down. The embedded stochastic tells us more weakness. Um, but then you start to see uh, some, you know, that even gives way to a rotation, which, we've, you know, which we did have. And now, today, 
you know. Uh, that 60 minute time frame looks pretty good as it just rolled over and we could see that now on the uh, on the futures <laughs> so we will pretend that 60 minutes that setting up here and then all of a sudden we have a triple threat uh, set up here too so our triple threats uh, where we had this nice coil this one moved up and you didn't have too many triple threats you had a couple uh, this time around you had actually a little divergence here or maybe a little divergence or a little triple threat uh, in this in this zone um, you know it wasn't much of one there's only time three uh, stochastics and look at these over here this is at 730 so you're not getting too many rotations let me see if that lines up I want to basically want to have all three of them above that line so basically right there when they're all all over that dotted line there and look at where that came into right there. So, you know, so important to have the wind in your sail. And when you see these setups, put them on there for a reason. I don't go, you know, I continue to go over them. You can see how they line up here perfectly. All right, so it's a great, great technique. Uh, but there's other things that, you know, we use it triple threat, uh, excuse me, triple threat. But we also want to make sure it's, it's part of other indicators. So what do we have here? We also have a volume profile line. Uh, so that's a good one. But we didn't get exactly to that 43. But the, again, we chop around these lines. But just because we're getting close to that, that has to be considered a triple threat. But then here, here's the, here's the, uh, the capper here. And then you also have the 60 minute time frame here being over, overextended. So you have the 60, you have the triple threat. You probably have a five minute. What time is that? That's, uh, that's at about 11. Oh, what time is that? 12. I can't even read it because it's underneath my uh, screen there. We'll call it about 1, 115 or something. So let's just take a look at the cash chart here at 115. I'm just curious. Right about here. That's 115. I'm circling it. It should be a square, but I'm just putting a circle there. There's your 115 area. All right, so you have your five-minute rotation, you have your 60-minute oversold, and you have your triple threat. This right here on your time frame is called a multiple time frame, you know, short setup, uh, where you have all all three time frames, the, the one minute, the five minute, and the 60 ready to turn over. Now, there's one more thing you can add to that, that area. Whenever you have a, a little uh, trend line here, I like to do a little pop there. I like to take that trend line. If I see another pivot area, I, I tend to throw that in there. I mean, it hits it exactly. That trend line is is tagged exactly. So if you're able to identify this trend line, and this this is not a bad one, you know, because it started off the beginning of the day. It's the overnight high. It's not a bad trend line to pay attention to. So right now, this area was your key area, and that's just, that's all we have to do is wait for these setups to come up. Um, you know, find the best setups combination of all our indicators and uh, then you usually have the better areas to trade uh, and you have the, the momentum on your side if you start to see that move it tends to give you the bigger moves so um, typically what I would do and again I was not really doing this in the market today as I drop this uh, where's this, this is, I drop this uh, that's a pretty good measured move off of this too there was a nice series of tags here and we kind of broke down through it and then retested it retested it and uh extend that line over to the right look at how we broke down and then retested it almost again to the penny um it's just perfect the retracements trend lines channel lines and retracements are so important so this becomes a high probability setup too plus a textbook lane divergence now that i look at it now that i see it right here Again, I was not doing this uh, during the day today, so I was a little busy uh, with other things. But this would have been uh, a key setup. Now, what do you see here? You see the the higher low. I mean, it's going to be a higher high here. The higher high in here, very obvious. The lower high uh, on a ram in the bush also gives that an in indication. Now, again, you didn't get much from that. But that was just the last section of the day. You did get a little pullback from 24 to 19. Not, not a bad move. And you didn't get too many uh, divergences today. Um, I had to look back and see them. But that was uh, kind of a, you know, it caps off a great week of technical charting. You know, it's just a, a great thing to have these set up. You don't have to be, say, oh, I missed all these things. 
you know, you got to be looking forward to next week now after you see how the market reacted all this week. I mean, we could go back each day and identify these wedge pattern breakout, ex- explain to you where they broke out. You saw where they broke out. You saw the measured moves all play out. I mean, this is just key stuff. I mean, this is just like boom, 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 right up to the measured move, back off, lane divergences, breakdown. I mean, we are on top of it. So this is uh, this is great. You know, if you're like me, you're already uh, jonesing for Monday to get here. That's the day before. Take a look at the day before. Same exact thing. The master of the uh, the chart here. This is I love looking back and seeing these wedge patterns, understanding that 65, 75 percent area, uh, the breakdown, the divergences, the move up, the new channels. These are just this is another day back. This is Wednesday. I showed you Thursday. I just showed you Friday. Same patterns playing over and over and over again. Surround yourself with a strict. A uh, group of indicate, you know, I don't even like to use the word indicators. You know, we don't like to use all that uh, things that kind of put us in a, uh, a situation where, sorry, a phone call had to get that. But anyway, you get where I'm going here. Monday, we're going to do it all over again. Um, what do we see for Monday? What do we see? Let's just take a look one more time. Um, we have that 60 minute here rolling over. We have the five minute, a little extended. Look at that five minute. Um, bounce today it also put bounced right up to that trend line it's amazing I mean, look at how we uh, originally broke out tagged it broke down through it tagged it how like this tagged it boom boom broke down tagged it that line is such a great line um, and then the daily here it's a tough call going into t- uh, you know into uh, Monday you have to you know that da- that daily stochastic hasn't turned back up the 60s kind of weak and we closed on a kind of a week uh, week day and, co- and rolling over on the hourly so I'm a little cautious going into next week but we've taken things a little bit slower um, I have a couple new setups really nice ones on the HPS watch list so those you could you could access on the um, on the um, HPS site uh, on your dashboards and you'll see those and actually I'll just touch touch base on a few more stocks right now